watching Riding with Marshall, and today we're doing the 1,000 mile review on this bike right here, the Moto Guzzi V85 TT Travel. And I know a little bit about this bike because I bought it, it's mine. Anyway, stay tuned if you want to hear some more. Hey guys, thanks for joining me for the V85 TT 1,000 mile review. We're actually at about 1,300, maybe 1,400 miles now. I don't know, something close to that. So I know a little thing or two more than I did at the first review. And, uh, oh, excuse me, not, not alone. Look at the little horsey. Anyway, speaking of little horsies, we have this one over here. This is my 2023 V85 TT. Yes, I bought it. And do I regret the decision? Well, stay at least a moment or two more to find out. So, I have to be careful parking it in the grass because it's an air-cooled engine, but what's worse than an air-cooled engine is a Euro 5 mandated catalytic converter. I gotta make sure there's no grass touching the catalytic converter or we can start a fire. So the V85 TT, what have I done to it in a thousand miles? Well, the first thing I did was I added these tank pads. Not that it needed it, it's just that this tank is actually plastic. And I don't want my uh, chaps scuffing it up or my jeans scuffing it up. So there's that. I added a tail bag, a little tiny one, mainly for this GoPro. I added the Marshall Miller grip system right there. Yes, they're hair bands. That's all you really need. And they're great. I added the top windshield. That's like 25 bucks on Amazon, guys. Take a look at it. Uh, motorcycle windshield extension clip. Something like that. I added a phone holder. I'm about to change the mirrors out. I really don't like them. I bought some bigger rectangular mirrors so I can see more what's going on behind me. I added the GV bars without the GV emblem because they don't pay me to advertise. Oh, get that off the engine. The engine I measured down here, the heat gets to 306 degrees right in through here. Gotta be careful with that. So what can I tell you that I didn't know before? Well, the good things about it are the 853cc engine is actually pretty, uh, pretty fun to ride. The gears are really short, uh, so you flip through them a lot, which I'm not a big fan of. I kind of miss the DCT of the Grey Wolf, which I still have. The uh, engine though, it, it makes a lot of noise, it's fun. Uh, it is an air-cooled V-twin, which means there will be vibration. Any of you guys on the V85 Facebook page that says, my, my engine doesn't vibrate, yeah, BS. Go ride a Goldwing and tell me your engine doesn't vibrate. You do feel it a little bit in the bars, especially when you're doing 80 miles an hour. Well, don't do 80 miles an hour. I have to. I live in Colorado. Our highway is... <laughs> roughly 80 to 85 miles an hour. So, this gorgeous bike right here, uh, it is actually pretty fun to ride. And I will show you that, but not right now. So the good thing is, it's fun to ride. And it's easy to ride, the suspension is super easy. Uh, it makes the hardest road pretty smooth. The bad is that you run out you run out of oomph pretty quick in the gears. So you're switching gears a lot, as I stated. Um, you're also not gonna get too much faster than 100 miles an hour winding it full out. Well, nobody needs to go 100 miles an hour. Sometimes you do. If you're on a, an interstate doing 80 and the dump truck in front of you is spraying rocks all over the road, you need to eliminate the threat. Get around it. Get around it at any cost because the next rock could be to your chest. It could be to your face shield of your helmet. It could be strong enough to knock you hel your, your helmet sideways. Or for those of you not wearing helmets, it could be your death. 
So, assess the threat, eliminate the threat. And sometimes that requires some speed. Uh, now the ugly. I'm gonna give away my political affiliation here. In the US, I would ask everyone to try to stay in the middle. But the news media tries to polarize us to the right or the left. If they can create a civil war, they will. And because that makes good copy. Uh, if you can make enemies, even politically, uh, that people will click on and go, oh, what that evil person do today? They will. And a lot of you are just playing right into it. Anyway, here's the political part of the review that gives me away. And uh, here's where I lose about a quarter of my viewers. I'm not going to say a half because I was never convinced half of you ever voted the one side anyway. And here we are. This whole thing, all of it, is pretty much wrong. It looks really cool. It tells you the mode, tells you the temperature outside, tells you the time. Uh, if you sort through the menu, your max speed, which is wrong. Anything regarding speed is actually wrong, and I'll prove that to you. Uh, how do we say this is political? Let's start the bike and I'll tell you. And I'll keep it really short. First, got to get in in neutral, which might mean rolling it forward. Oh look, I rolled it backwards, now I'm in second. <laughs> and here's the political part of our view. The cruise control switch, press and hold it. See the blinky left light? Well, when you're driving, when you're riding, that blinky light on the left identifies as a left turn signal. Now, when you engage it, it goes solid green, but couldn't they have just made it a solid yellow and then turn it solid green? So, we have a signal that identifies as a turn signal. Press and hold to turn it off. We have this light here. Now this light here, that means your headlight's on, normally. But in this case, that indicator identifies as the daylight running lamp, not the headlight. So if you're riding at night and you think you're cool because your headlight's on, you would be wrong. So let's turn on the headlight. The indicator is gone. Now what just happened? Do I have a light? Yes. The headlights are now on. Well, how about brights? What if I need to flick my brights? That's this third setting up here, right? No, you would be incorrect. That identifies as the auxiliary light switch for a bike that didn't come with auxiliary lights. So it's a dead switch. Now the good news is, if I buy the auxiliary lights, they plug right in and that switch will work for that. So where's the brights? The brights are over here. Which you will accidentally flip upwards a few times while you're riding. And now you have a brights light. A brights indicator. So one more time, the cruise light identifies as a left turn signal. The headlight lamp identifies only as the daylight running lights the I'm gonna shut this off shut that off shut that off you have a mode switch well that's for ride modes right no it identifies as a ride mode switch but it really isn't it's the menu scroller and then you have well how do you change ride modes you press the starter button. Now, when the engine's running, you press the starter button to change the ride modes. So, the starter button identifies as a ride mode switch. Well, we're just all supposed to accept that, right? Uh, well, I think the whole thing needs counseling myself. 
the shaft drive has a sound that's so cool. It's hard to describe, but when you first take off, you hear it and you think there's a cop behind you winding up his siren. Because it sounds almost like, uh, like the siren on a bullhorn when it first just gets its current. It's really a cool sound. So I set the cruise control on the V85 to 65. The phone says 60, 65, 60, 61. Back to 60. One thing we're gonna check is as I've shown you, the speed on the V85 TT is not accurate. Let's check it here on the Fury. No, that's not fair. That's not a Moto Guzzi. Why are we doing this? Because somebody in the comments section of the original V85TT, I think, video, maybe it wasn't even my video, somebody had commented that all bikes, speedometers, are off by six miles an hour. They didn't say specifically six. And it really depends where you're at in your speed range. Let's test that. miles an hour 30 miles an hour 40 40 50 51 50 slight delay on the phone 54 and I'm doing 54 57 approaching 60 Oh, okay, so you say the Honda Fury has a speedometer, right? But that's one bike out of a million. Let's test another one. And here we are on the NC700X, or the Grey Wolf. This one has a digital display. 26 miles per hour. The phone says 27. Oh, the other one changed to 27. Now they're both 28. Thirty-five. So let's talk about one more thing that I see on the V85 TT forums, and that is buffeting. Now, even with this shield here, my helmet does, uh, it sounds like there's buffeting on either side of my helmet. Um, I've had the bike eh, pretty close to 100 miles an hour, hard to tell with that speedometer. It says my top speed was 104, which I'm guessing means about 99. Anyway, um, helmet buffeting is a thing because of the windshield shape, or rather lack of a hole here to take out some of it. But also, um, the guys complain that a lot of air is getting up through here. See that? Those two spots. Now there's things you can buy for those two spots. Or, if you don't mind putting a little silicone on the plastic that will rub off later. I'm thinking about cutting some insulation tubes. You know, just putting some of those big two-inch insulation tubes right there made out of sponge. Siliconing a little piece right there and right there. See if it actually makes any difference at all. A lot of the guys on the V85 TT forums and uh, Facebook all say this is an actual real issue. And with my hand there, I can feel some air being shoved upwards. So maybe it is, what do I know? So I'm thinking of what to call the bike. I'm very tempted to call it the Silly Goose. There's lots of eagles on it, but there's so many silly things about this bike. 
I can't help but call it a goose. Like this sticker. Attention, don't park the vehicle with the sun from behind. The reflection can damage the instrument board. Don't park the vehicle with the sun from behind. <laughs> it's a motorcycle. You're gonna park it in the sun. Make a better instrument board. No other bike that I know of has that sticker on it. <laughs> oh, little diagram there. Sun, windshield, instrument board. Yeah, it's a silly goose, but it's my goose. All right, so let's talk about the TPS monitor. So the thing with the Moto Guzzi is if everything in this part of it is wrong, why am I still riding the bike? Because you can't not. <laughs> uh, the engine is so quirky and yet torquey enough and yet fast enough and the seat is so comfortable, it's hard to not ride the V85 TT. And it's hard to not love the V85 TT. But being that it's not a human being, I can critique the heck out of it. So looking at air pressure, let's check this. Gauge number one. I'm in the sunlight. That's going to be hard to see. Gauge number one says 42 PSI. And that's what I want. Here's gauge number two. need three arms for this. Okay, here we go. 42. This one here, this is the one I use on my air compressor. This one says 41.2. So this one is a little shy. Let's put the cap back on, take the bike out for a ride. Now as the tires warm up, the air pressure will increase because matter expands as it gets warmer. That was weird. What was that noise? That was matter expanding in the hot sun. One of my cases just kind of uh, moved. Anyway, I'm gonna put side cases on. We're gonna take it for a run. We should be seeing air pressure on the TPMS sensors above 42 after running it for like 20 minutes. Let's find out. So without shutting the bike off and after having ridden it about seven miles, the rear tire is at 38 PSI on the screen. Now we know we left the house with it at 42. After it being heated up, it should be a lot closer to 50. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say 45. So, once again, that's misleading. I'm not low on air. So I know you're watching a video with a review and you think, well, this is just one guy's opinion. Uh, why would we buy a bike based on one guy's opinion? And you're absolutely right. That's why I've included another guy. And he's on a BMW. No, he isn't. He's on another Moto Guzzi. So here we have two Moto Guzzis. And 
Based on the tree line, I'd say we're probably up at about, what, 9,000 feet, you think? 8,500, 9,000, somewhere there. And if we look behind us, now we don't know these guys. We have a Tiger 900. And another Moto Guzzi. <laughs> so obviously we're in the hills of Italy with all these Moto Guzzi's running around. Except you know me better than that. And you probably are gonna complain about the wind noise in this video. So we're not gonna film it much, much else here. But uh, we're up in uh, Cherokee Park or Red Feather Lakes in Colorado. And we're riding dirt on our Moto Guzzi's. So this is Eric, and Eric is in, uh, he's inspired to have his own YouTube channel, so keep an eye out for him. If we knew the name of the channel, I'd give it to you. Uh, so Eric, uh, this is your first motorcycle, right? Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> this is your 80th motorcycle, right? That's closer. <laughs> Maybe 100. So after over, okay, just roughly, somewhere in that ballpark of many dozens of motorcycles, why would you buy a little 853 cc? Uh, it's very has a lot of character, which I love. It's super fun to ride. Fairly lightweight compared to the bigger ADV bikes. Low center of gravity, which is nice. And contrary to today, with three of them out here, not everyone usually has one. <laughs> <laughs> it just worked out that way. <laughs> Um, so mine is the travel and what model is yours? The adventure. So the adventure, a, okay. Mine's a little bit older, probably a year older model. It's a 2020. Oh. So you're, you've got the tubeless wheels, I've got tubes, and then and it's an E4 model rather than the E5. And that's how we think about them today. So, so my question and the viewers too, uh, my cat converter gets very toasty on my feet on an 80 degree day, which we're not today, fortunately. Right. Does yours do the same? Yes. Okay. That is, everybody I think worries about the cylinder heads yeah. getting hot or your knees getting hot. It's actually your ankles that get burned. And that's the cat down underneath the bike. So. And I, I agree wholeheartedly. The cylinders are no hotter than any other bike I've had. In fact, they're substantially cooler than something like an Indian Roastmaster. The uh, cat converter makes your feet a little toasty. I'm not gonna say they burn or anything. Uh, I've had some Harleys though, where my right leg felt like it was just singeing due to a lack of heat mitigation on the exhaust. These bikes don't have that problem, in case you're wondering. Well, Eric, I guess we're gonna go yep. over there. Let's go riding. And uh, Eric is a great rider. He's, uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm leading and I'm slowing him back. It's all good, we're out in the mountains. And I'm admitting <laughs> uh, the Gray Wolf was 418 pounds, something like that. Maybe a little more with crash bars. The, uh, these bikes are about 500 and probably 40 with everything I've added. Uh, they handle the same as a Gray Wolf. I really don't feel the weight of the bike at all. Um, but I don't have a lot of experience on uh, loose hills. Now this dirt is perfect. We're in the good spot. You'll, you'll see me clench when we go into a downturned uh, kind of a bend full of loose gravel. Then you're gonna see me go to like 12 miles an hour, barely enough to get myself out of it. Hopefully we don't do that. Enjoy the ride.
So, uh, are we still recording? Yeah, can you see that? Time to take the phone off of it. And like I said, I hope I'm not going too slow for you, but with those cars coming out of the corners at us, I'm kind of glad I am. Yeah, no, you gotta, you gotta hang right more on them left corners. Yeah. Eric, you got a few bugs on your uh, lights there, man. I can't even hardly see through it. <laughs> I guess that means you actually ride this thing. Look at the dirt, too. Yeah, it goes, it goes through some stuff. <laughs> yeah, apparently. And if you had anything, you've had one thing break on it. I only had an exhaust shield break. That shield down there with the down big there. washer on it. But that was easy to fix, but you haven't had anything mechanical? Nope. Awesome. Well, I said we're not really in the Rocky Mountains, are we? Just a reminder, I am on stock tires here. These are not the Trail Max missions, these are the Meridians. And this is really not bad. I mean this this road is pretty small gravel. But if I had to stop quickly, <laughs> so I'd rather go slow around blind turns and whip through them quickly. I'm coming around that corner and I see that view. I'm like, oh, steer, Marshall, we got a corner coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that view right there.
koncertov. Well guys, how long have you ridden home with a screw in your tire? The Moto Guzzi pressure, tire pressure gauge, is not accurate compared to three of my other gauges at home. It always reads less than what you really have, and by more than two pounds. And we're going to try, we are 57 miles away from home up in the mountains. And we, <laughs> we're going to try to get first to a restaurant that has gas and maybe air. And see if we can ride without that screw blowing out the tire. let's take it out and see how much tire leaks so that's uh, at least 50 something miles with the screw in it known we don't know how much unknown and I had 39 psi in the bike after I supposedly filled it to 45 at a station are we gonna get air are we gonna get a really long screw or is it a short screw? Well, it's long enough to penetrate. Oh yeah. That was a long screw. <laughs> and there goes the air. Good thing we didn't take it out up there in the mountains. Mm -hmm. You can hear the air coming out. Let's see if I can plug it real quick and fill it up with air. We're going to try one of these. It's a plug screw made specifically to plug holes in tires. The trick is getting it in there straight. As straight as the old screw was and it's going to take both hands. Alright, we got the screw in there. It's a screw that's coated and specially made to seal holes in tires. We'll find out because I'll fill it up with air and we'll see tomorrow how much air it has. So what are we doing here in the dark? I'm showing you the headlight. At the moment, that green indicator tells me it's not the headlight. This is in fact the daylight running lamp. So one switch ahead. And there's the headlight. Let's go to the street lights. I'm glad I bought it. Would I do things differently? For the price, for the price of under 13K, I'm glad I bought it. I can accept its idiosyncrasies. 
I'm not too pleased about the speedometer being as far off as it is, but I can adjust my way of thinking and live with it. Uh, the rest of the bike is just good, clean fun. And I don't mind doing a little more valve maintenance a little more often myself because I'm wrench handy and it's not hard to do the valve maintenance on this bike. V85 TT. I recommend it. Just know what you're getting into.